Have you ever wondered why our ancestors' fascination with the heavenly was so great? They build huge, massive structures aimed at the extremely detailed observation of the sky, structures that to this day are shrouded in mystery, and we can't explain how they were built and why. One theory suggests that these structures were erected using the knowledge provided to our ancient ancestors by visitors from another world. This is exactly the idea behind the theory of ancient astronauts, or ancient aliens. This is a pseudoscientific hypothesis that intelligent extraterrestrial beings visited Earth and made contact with humans in ancient times. Proponents suggest that this contact influenced the development of modern cultures, technologies, religions, and even human biology. It is a generally accepted position that the deities of most, if not all, religions are of extraterrestrial origin and that the advanced technologies brought to Earth by ancient astronauts were interpreted as evidence of divine status by early humans. However, this theory, developed in this way, is not taken seriously by scientists and archaeologists who consider it pseudo-archaeological or unscientific. It has not received attention in any peer-reviewed research. During the second half of the 20th century, proponents of ancient aliens wrote numerous books or appeared regularly in the mass media. Some of them gained great popularity, such as Eric von Daniken, Zachariah Stitchin, Robert C.G. Temple, Giorgio Tsoukalos, and others. Among scientists, there is a consensus that the hypothesis of ancient astronauts is not impossible, but unfounded and unnecessary. The mysteries that are cited as evidence for the hypothesis can be explained without having to refer to ancient aliens from other worlds. And while today, scientists argue about the theory, trying to apply Occam's razor so far unsuccessfully, it seems that the question of quests from space was on the agenda thousands of years ago. Ancient religious texts describe these visits. It is precisely in them that the supporters of the theory find their strongest support that is backing their views. They are based on the idea that ancient creation myths about gods coming down from the heavens to earth to create or guide humanity are referring to extraterrestrial visitors whose superior technology explains their perception as gods. They draw an analogy with events in our time when isolated cultures are exposed to Western technology such as the discovery of the cargo huts in the South Pacific at the beginning of the 20th century. Cultures that believed that various Western ships and their loads were sent by the gods in fulfillment of the prophecies of their return. Sumer, an ancient Sumerian myth of the Enuma Elish inscribed on the cuneiform tablets and part of the library of Ashurbanipal. It is said that mankind was created to serve gods called Anunnaki. Proponents of the hypothesis believe that the Anunnaki are extraterrestrials who came to Earth to mine gold for their own needs. According to the Enuma Elish story, the Anunnaki realized that mining was bad for their race, and for that reason, they created humans as slaves, and they only came to collect the mining. Ramayana In Hindu mythology, gods and their avatars travel from place to place in flying vehicles called vimanas, there are many references to these flying machines in the Ramayana. One of these was used by the Lankan king Ravana of Sri Lanka, described in records dating to the 5th or 4th century BC. Here are some examples of mentions of such apparatus, recorded in Book 6 of the Ramayana. The Magic Chariot Is not my chariot wonderful, called Pushpak, forged by divine hands? This chariot, guarded with the greatest care, will carry you through the airfields, and you will light with travel tirelessly down in the royal city of beautiful Ayodhya. The departure, swiftly sped through the air as Rama chose, the wondrous chariot rose from the earth, and adorned with swans and silver wings, she carried her load of kings through the clouds. Eric von Daniken discusses the Ramayana and the Vimanas in chapter six of the Chariots of the Gods, suggesting that they are space vehicles. In support of his hypothesis, he offers a quotation from the 1889 translation of the Mahabharata by K. Roy. Bhima flew with his Vamana on a huge beam that was brilliant like the sun and made a noise like the thunder of a storm. The Book of Genesis and the Book of Enoch In the Book of Genesis, New International Version, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2 and 4, it says, When men began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them, 
The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any of them they wished. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also after, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. Many Christians believe that these groups are the various families of the children of Adam and Eve. Another interpretation is that the Nephilim are the children of the sons of God and the daughters of men, although scholars deny this. Proponents of the ancient astronauts claim that Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden fruit to become godlike, and this was the first step in human evolution. The first part of the apocryphal book of Enoch seems to expand and interpret Genesis 6-1. According to it, the sons of God were a group of 200 angels called Watchers who came down to earth to watch over us, but were subsequently tempted by the beauty of human women and began to breed with them. The common offspring are the Nephilim, giants who destroy all the gains of men. When humans could no longer withstand them, the Nephilim turned against humanity. The Watchers, in turn, taught people metallurgy and metalworking, cosmetics, witchcraft, astrology, astronomy, and meteorology. God then ordered the Watchers to be imprisoned on Earth and created the Great Flood to rid the planet of the Nephilim and the humans who had received knowledge from the Watchers. To ensure the survival of mankind, Noah is warned of the coming destruction. The book describes the Watchers as fallen angels because they disobeyed God. You can find detailed videos about the Book of Enoch in our channel. Some proponents of the ancient astronauts claim that these writings are a historical account of extraterrestrials who visited Earth, called Watchers because their mission was to observe humanity. Some of the aliens disobeyed orders. They made contact with humans, interbred with human women, and shared their knowledge with them. Thus, the Nephilim were hybrids between humans and aliens. Chuck Missler and Mark Eastman hypothesize that the modern UFOs we see are actually fallen angels or their descendants. Their theory states that Noah's lineage was not tainted by alien interference, and the alteration of the human gene pool was the main problem on Earth before the Flood. Von Daniken also suggested that the two angels who visited Lot in Genesis 19 were ancient astronauts who used atomic weapons to destroy the city of Sodom. You can find a detailed video about Sodom and Gomorrah in our channel. Mark Dim reinterprets the book of Genesis, writing that humanity started anew on another planet. Book of Ezekiel In the Old Testament, chapter 1 of the book of the prophet Ezekiel tells of a vision in which he saw a huge cloud that contained fire, emitting lightning and a bright light. It says the center of the fire was like red-hot metal, and in it was what looked like four living creatures. These creatures, called cherubim, are described as winged human-like. They moved to and fro like lightning, and fire moved to and fro among the creatures. The passage goes on to describe four shining objects called Ophani, each of which looked like a wheel crossing a wheel. These objects could fly and move with the creatures. When the living creatures moved, the wheels beside them also moved. In Chapter 4 of The Chariots of the Gods, entitled, Was God an Astronaut?, Von Daniken suggests that Ezekiel saw a spaceship or ships. This hypothesis was advanced by Maurice Jessup in 1956 and by Arthur W. Orton in 1961. A detailed version of the hypothesis was described by Joseph F. Bloomrich in his 1974 book, Ezekiel's Spaceships. Other References in the Bible Some proponents of ancient astronauts, such as Von Daniken and Brian Downing, believe that the concept of hell in the Bible may be a real description of the planet Venus brought to Earth by aliens who show people pictures of the planet's hot surface. Proponents of this hypothesis claim that God and Satan are extraterrestrials who had a dispute over whether human beings should be allowed the information offered by the Tree of Knowledge. David Childress, a leading proponent of the hypothesis of creation by ancient astronauts, compares this story to the Greek myth of Prometheus, who gave mankind the knowledge of fire. Eric von Daniken suggested that the descendants of aliens had children with hominids, and this is called in the Bible, Original Sin. Religions Related to UFOs Various new religious movements, including some branches of Theosophy, Scientology, Realism, the Aetherius Society, and Heaven's Gate, believe in ancient and modern contacts with extraterrestrial intelligence. 
Many of these denominations consider both ancient scriptures and recent revelations related to extraterrestrial activity. Psychologists have found that UFO religions have similarities that suggest members of these groups consciously or subconsciously associate a fascination with science fiction memes. It's amazing why religion wants to rule out the existence of extraterrestrial life and how proponents of the theory of ancient astronauts lightly deny religious deities and canons. What if both exist independently? If it was God who drove these invaders out of our world, and that is why they dare not come near us, because even they themselves do not understand the power that has come upon them, then is not God our Savior again? The truth is that for any theory, one can find facts in support and in denial in the pile. It all depends on which thesis he wants to prove or disprove. What a person really believes in, however, no one and nothing can change. Share your thoughts on the topic in a comment.